Co. Let's go ahead and start. It is already January 5th. Every year it's, I love January because you have the entire year ahead of you and it feels like anything is possible as opposed to like December, you're like, oh, you know, did I, didn't I do what I needed to do? But January is just that, um, Casey talks about this and Chris talks about this, that temporal landmark um, where you feel like you can really do something again, right? And so I love January. Um, let's start off the way we always start off. Um, any shares that you want to uh, share with the group, any wins, any gratitude, any shout outs for any of your colleagues or your friends or your leaders or your staff, anything like that, you know what to do. Just go to your reaction button, hit the hand up button so that I know to call on you. Starting with Dana. Good morning, Dana. Good morning. So one of the new or the newest member on our team, um, Chris Byers, who is in launch, um, he was going after some expireds. He uh, wasn't able to take the expired listing, but the agent was like, I'll pay a commission if you bring me a buyer. So he went the next step further and brought him a buyer and got it under contract yesterday as a backup offer. And it should be going to first position today. Oh, how about that? Right yes. on. Yes. Right on. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thanks for shouting him out. That like, well, that just starts our morning off real good. Um, love it. Awesome. Gus, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Yeah. Um, I just want to give a quick shout out to Lindsay uh, Emmons on our team. She recently joined us and over our uh, short break, she had her first closing with the team at 1.45 million. And I'm just proud of her. Uh, she's really just leaning into everything and, and diving into the model and trying different things, just finding ways to win. And we're just really super proud of her. That's amazing. Right on. Congratulations. It probably took me like eight years to sell like my first like million dollar property, you guys. So that is so huge. That's amazing. Love that shout out. Man, you guys are on a roll this morning. Um, Elizabeth, good morning. Good morning. Um, I actually wanted to thank a lot of you guys on the call. Um, I know Austin and San Antonio showed up a lot yesterday during um, our future innovators call. Um, it was lovely to see faces I already knew and uh, having you guys join. So thanks so much for doing that. Wanted to, yeah, just shout you guys out. I love that. And, you know, to everyone, uh, man, I have to say, Texas is showing up for these place spaces. Um, I know that. Um, Jordan's team, I know, I believe Anne and uh, someone else that's just like, I'm missing it, um, doing a lot of the luxury stuff. I know Elizabeth's doing a lot of the young innovators. Um, I know that there's one I'm missing right now. Hold on. Um, Allie is uh, running uh, some of the um, productivity stuff. I know there's some stuff coming up. Like you guys are definitely showing up as leaders and um, Valencia doing converted. I mean, there's just like stuff everywhere, uh, which is really, really exciting. So thank you for showing up the way you do. Uh, Valencia also has black real estate leaders, be real. Where is that? Oh, we need information on that. Okay. I have not even heard of it. So yes, please. Uh, we would love to be, uh, huge supporters of that. Like Texas is just taking over. Don't tell anybody. Um, Speaking of, um, a couple of the shout outs that I have, uh, if you still have a shout out and you totally forgot it and you're like, oh, is there still time? Just raise your hand. Um, a couple of shout outs. Uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph and Austin pended uh, a 1.3 million um, from open house. So again, if you guys are not doing open houses, if you kind of thought that was dead because the market is dead, I'm here to tell you, market's not dead. Um, Cheryl in Houston pended a 380 from open house over the break. Um, Alyssa on our team here in Austin uh, pended a 305 from Pond Leads. So those leads that are dead, um, and I'm using that word a lot today because you know that's definitely a mentality that like, if you haven't had it, maybe you're not human, but most of you are human and you've had that thought. I'm here to tell you that old leads are good leads. Um, Maria and Ashley, when I uh, shot them out, uh, they pended a for sale by owner uh, 275. And uh, I also want to shout out our director of operations, Mary, who had a baby uh, over the holiday, eight pounds, 12 ounces. She was not messing around and that baby wasn't messing around. So uh, we got we got a whole new baby around here uh, to love on. Helen, I'm going to you. Good morning.
Oop, hold up, just hit the unmute button. You're almost there. There we go. Um, good morning. I wanted to shout out uh, Henrietta on our team who has a two under contract. And then also Rita who um, has a listing, which is her neighbor. And she was able to get full asking over the break. And then I think she has another listing from another neighbor, I think because of that listing. And then also, it, I don't know if it was mentioned before our Zoom break last month, I uh, want to shout out Ty uh, for having uh, one under contract. Right on, Yay. man. You know, like it's, there's nothing better than starting the year off with contracts. Uh, so if you don't have one currently, you have the rest of the month, right? Um, Helen, awesome, awesome shout outs. Thank you for that. Um, and this morning's guest, you guys, is uh, one of my favorite people. Uh, if you don't know Bethany, you probably may have heard of her uh, either before she joined Place and partnered with Place, maybe after she partnered with Place. Um, she is one of those people, I'll tell you, don't you all love somebody who goes all in? Like, do you have friends like that? Do you have colleagues like that, that just go all in and you can feel it and you know it and you know that you can count on them. And whenever they uh, decide to do something, they really do it. Like, do you guys know people like that? Those are, those are the, the good kind of people. You like them. You want to be them, right? I want to be that kind of person. And so I know when Bethany partnered with our organization, she was already doing a whole lot of stuff. And then she took the tools that we have and just like, Ooh, it blows my mind um, how how much we can do when we plug in. So um, I want to I want to kind of just set it up for you guys. Um, everybody aware that wealth building um, episode number one dropped? Yes. All right. I see some head nods. I see some hands. Awesome. This is good. This is good. We have probably sixty percent of people. Um, the rest I don't know. You're not on camera, so I can't. I'm not going to assume. Um, but uh, so we know that number two, we all have goals for this year, right? To help more friends and family. A couple of you, the rest of you, I don't know how you're getting business, but I hope, I hope friends and family is kind of part of it. Um, and then number three, you probably personally have wealth building goals, right? Like it's not enough to know what to do, but it's like, you want to do it. Like this year is your year. Anybody else feel like that? Like this year is my year. I'm going to actually do it not enough for me to just know what to do. Like I'm going to put it into practice. Okay. Awesome. So we're on the right track, Bethany. Like we're in the right place. This is the right zoom. I just wanted to make sure. Um, I'm going to spotlight Bethany. Bethany, where, where are you? Where do you live? Like where, where do you call home? What does that look like? You know, have you been in real estate a little while or just started yesterday? Tell us a little bit about maybe your story and how you grew up or anything you want to share. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. I actually, I don't think Adelina knows this, but I was uh, first exposed to Keller Williams in Texas, actually. I was a nanny in Dallas, Texas for a family, and the mom of the kids was moving her business from a different broker to Keller Williams, and so I got exposed to Keller Williams at 19 years old. Um, <laughs> I am from the great state of Minnesota. We've gotten, I think, 18 inches of snow over the last 48 hours. And so I was, I'm gonna look a little crazy right now. Cause I was just helping dig my neighbor out. So, um, most of the time we love Minnesota. It's just very <laughs> snowy right now. Um, so I guess a little bit of my story is I grew up in a very conservative home where my parents helped plant a church in one of the roughest parts of St. Paul, Minnesota. And when I was 10, they decided to move our family overseas to be missionaries in a, a third world country where you couldn't drink the tap water. Most bathrooms were holes in the ground, like very extreme conditions. And so as a kid growing up in the inner city of St. Paul, um, I just, I mean, I've, I felt like I was just kind of a normal kid. And then moving to, uh, we lived in Kazakhstan, if you're familiar with that country. And living there, we became kind of the rich white people. And mm -hmm. that was really uncomfortable, even though my dad was doing work both in um, ministry, but also like he's an agricultural engineer. So teaching people how to clean their water and do these um, different things to keep themselves healthy. It was just a very interesting environment to be a 10-year-old girl. We then were deported when I was 12 um, and moved back to Minnesota where 
uh, you won't know the city unless you like really are a Mighty Ducks fan, which is like an old, old movie. Uh, but they put me in private school in Edina, which is one of the most prestigious areas in Minnesota. So I joke that I didn't have enough culture shock coming back that they just said, let's just put you in Edina. <laughs> so I went from being like the really rich white kid in the former Soviet Union to being um, the really, really poor kid in Edina. And so my relationship with money just growing up was not comfortable. Uh, my parents never talked about it. I think they just kind of viewed it as something that wasn't, you know, they were living, I wouldn't say paycheck to paycheck, but pretty darn close. And um, so fast forward, went to college, went to a private college, took on student loans, put things on credit cards to make it through because I was paying for myself to get through college. And then when I graduated with a four-year degree, well, the market was crap because the job market, because it was 2010 and no one wanted to hire a fresh college graduate. So I jumped into real estate and my parents were not thrilled. They're like, how are you going to do this? The market, real estate market wasn't great then either, right? So over the last, you know, 12 years of being in real estate, it's been a journey. Um, I'm so grateful for Place. Our team joined Place. Our first financial month was in July. Um, still feel like I'm getting my bearings under me a lot of the time, but it's been really incredible to have partners like you all um, and have opportunities like the Well Series. So I'm excited to talk about it this morning. Yeah. And give us kind of like, like, do you have a, a wealth story or like, do you just get done with college, pay off your credit cards, all good. And here you are sliding into 2023, just miss perfect. Like no. tell us, tell us that little journey um, if you want. Yeah, no, I'm super comfortable sharing all of it. So uh, I'll just say that there was a time period when I was in my mid twenties where I was making great money. Uh, great money, making more than both my parents combined. And they're both now working. My mom's a nurse. Um, and I was almost embarrassed of the money I was making. And I felt like there weren't people around me talking about paying your taxes, investing. So I decided not to file or pay my taxes for four years. It wasn't intentional, but it definitely wasn't a priority to me. It was kind of one of those, like, I'll figure it out later. And I actually had this gray box, which I still have, that I just kept putting receipts, invoices, 1099s, all that stuff in there until one day I looked up and I was like, if I don't figure this out, I'm never going to buy a house because I didn't own a house yet. And I walked into a bookkeeper's office with this box and just started crying and said, I need help. And so she helped me reorganize four years of invoices and receipts and everything. I filed, that was 2016. I filed all of my taxes that year paid off the state immediately because I learned that in Minnesota, and I don't know if Texas is like this, but if you, or you guys don't have state income tax. Yeah. So actually, never mind. But in Minnesota, if you haven't paid your state income tax, like they can take your real estate license away. So my entire world could have been ripped out from under me if I didn't get my crap together. So did that, paid off the state immediately. It was the highest income I had ever made personally. And I think it really came from the mindset of sometimes I think it's actually easier to be poor than it is, is to have a lot of money. And here's what I mean by that. I can stretch a thousand dollars for a really long time if I had to, like, I'm very comfortable still being poor. If I all of a sudden have a bunch of money in the bank, I get itchy. I'm like, what am I going to do with it? How am I going to invest it? What am I going to do? And so that's something I've had to become very aware of with my own personality. So I've actually created what I call my secret savings account. <laughs> so all my profit goes into this uh, savings account and I literally can't touch it unless I walked into my credit union and asked them to move it. I have no online banking. Like I purposely have, cause I just know myself. And so, um, those are tendencies I still haven't figured out. So I've just protected that money. Um, so anyway, fast forward, I ended up buying a duplex. I lived in one side, rented out the other, um, had a roommate on my side. So I was living there for $300 a month, cut my expenses to be so, so low. And then Ben rolled out the first wealth series. And I went, I need this and people in my life need it because it was uh, beginning of 2020. So I think there were a lot of really scared people in our world wondering how were they going to provide for their families. I was wondering the same thing. There was a period of time 
where we didn't, my lender called me and said, we don't know if we're going to be able to fund loans next week. Like it was just a, a time where we didn't really know what was going to happen. So I ended up creating this little group um, called Financial Rain on Facebook. And I just started inviting people like who's ever interested in learning about money and going through this class that I'm going through. It's completely free. I'd love to have you join. Well, that little group turned out to be over 200 people. And we would do the Well Series content during the week on our own, self-guided. And then on Saturdays, we would come together Saturday morning at 9 a.m. with our coffee and our jammies and talk about what did we, what were our ha ahas from the Well Series that previous week. Because of that, that was my catalyst to finishing paying off my tax debt, which in total was almost $70,000. When you add up the fees, the state, the IRS, the IRS one, I had put on a payment plan. That was how I was able to purchase my property is you can still buy real estate even if you're on an IRS payment plan. It's just the debt to income ratio is you know just factored in just like any other debt. Well, one day I called the IRS because they don't make it easy to see your balance. So a year and a half later, I called to say like, where's my balance at? It was higher than it was when I first went on the payment plan. No. That's like the power of compound interest in a bad way. So that really put me into gear and pushed me to pay it all off. So I went like really crazy on my debt in February of 2020 and had it all paid off by August of 2020. Wow. Wow. And so that was part of like, you were do going through the wealth series at that time. So for you personally, it was life changing. Like at some point you would have gotten your life together and you would have paid it off. This just accelerated what you could naturally do like on your own. Yeah. And I think here's something too, guys, like arguably I was the worst person <laughs> to lead that <laughs> Facebook group. Like arguably I was yeah, get the, the person, person behind on taxes to lead a wealth group. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. Like I am, I fully acknowledge I was the worst person to do that, but you know, what's so cool. My friends, Clinton Lauren, that went through that, they went from realizing they were negative $200,000 in their net worth to buying five properties or five doors, three properties in 13 months after completing the wealth series. And they're clients of mine. So, I mean, that benefits me too, right? And I had uh, someone that still hasn't worked with me <laughs> professionally, but she and her husband, and they are in their early 50s, they paid off $92,000 of consumer debt. Like, wow. these are like stories where you go, it didn't really matter, to be frank, what my situation was, because I wasn't teaching it. I was just hosting it. I was just providing an environment where people could come and as they are. And I was willing to be as I am and say, hey, I'm not perfect, but I want to learn this alongside you. So if you've thought about doing this, but you're like, I'm not qualified from the least qualified person in the room, like don't let that scare you from creating an environment where you can truly change people's lives. I really love that because if you're, human like most of us you do wait until you are qualified like that's programming that yeah. at least I have had right you don't teach unless you know right things like that yeah. um so what a like what a great um example of not being qualified by any standard in terms of what we naturally would say would qualify you um but you looked at it through a different mindset the mindset was I'm hosting an opportunity for people to be able to change their life. Um, and somebody else is actually teaching this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was never, I'm, we're not financial advisors. We're not tax accountants. I mean, we're just saying like, Hey, here's some content that's going to help you. Now, if you still need referrals after this, <clears throat> excuse me, of like accountants and other people, I would love to connect with people I trust but this is more, here's the thing. There's a week dur during the well series, or there's an episode, sorry, that is focused on retirement. I cannot tell you how many tears there were that Saturday that we talked about retirement. I, I would sometimes add like sprinkle in pieces of just things I've learned because I've been around Keller Williams for so long. I was a market center team leader for two and a half years. And I remember we did this exercise where I took these I took a paper, you can get them at Ikea, 
a paper measuring tape and I had them rip off or I was, I didn't have them, but I, I ripped off the end of like the average life expectancy for a woman. And then I was like, what? Cause it, it, my group was all women the first time I did this. And then I said, rip off the end of where you are now. And what was left is roughly like their remaining life expectancy and talking about what do you want to do with the rest of your life? And most of those things cost money. And the other piece of that is a lot of them had this wake up call doing the retirement section where they went, holy crap, I don't have enough in retirement. And that doesn't even include all of the extra special things I want to do in this limited time frame that's left. And so I can't tell you how many like older women would share. I mean, I had people in college in our group saying like, hey, figured this out now because I wish I would have. And it really created this like authentic environment where people, I think people had a lot of like life changing. I mean, I still hear from those people. The Facebook group still lives on. I continued. The other thing that I think is important is I didn't just teach the well series once and be done. Mm -hmm. I ended up doing it then again in the fall. Um, when reuse the same episodes, yep. Nothing same special. content, nothing. And a lot of the same people went through it again. Cause again, you're not going to like go through eight. Then it was eight episodes. You're not going to go through eight episodes and master this, right? Like it, it, you just won't. I've personally gone through the first content five or six times. So, cause then the next year, so 2021, we hosted it three times. And then this year we hosted it in the spring, we were going to do it again in the fall, but we thought 2.0 was coming out in the fall. So we kind of waited. So, um, it's been an ongoing thing and the group just continues to grow. I, then when we rolled out this, when we're rolling out this new one, we intentionally created a new Facebook group. A lot of those people are migrating there as well, but that's going to be, you know, men and women. Um, but for me, it was really important originally to create a women centric group just because that's, a huge part of my database. Um, and I, I believe personally, there's no statistical information about this out there. I believe women are way more emotional when it comes to money and are more willing to open up that way than men are. And so I wanted to have a community that was more willing to like open up and, and get, go deep. Cause that's what I needed at the time. To be honest, it was really selfish at the beginning. Like I wanted I wanted people to hold me accountable. Like there's no better way to be held accountable than to be teaching it. Right on. And it's interesting because, um, you know, we don't like, we're all friends on this call, right? But at the same time, we're not so friendly that we're like, yeah, so right now, you know, um, I have, you know, $40,000 of credit card debt. We don't talk about that, right? We just kind of have it, like, you know, in the back. Um, you know, we have student loans, we have, you um, we have, you know, potentially tax debt, right? We just don't talk about those things. They're just like things that exist, part of us, we just don't talk about it, right? And until we deal with it or decide to deal with it, like your that time you walked into your, account, uh, your bookkeeper's office with the four years worth of taxes yeah. in your gray box, we all have a gray box. We all yeah. have a gray box. And, and if you don't have it now, you used to have it and you've, you've changed your life, right? But that gray box, it looks like different things for all of us. And one day we decide we're going, this is the, this is it, this is it. This is the time we're going to make that shift in our life, right? And it's, it's a decision we make, right? And so we all have something like that. And if it's, and if we've already overcome the financial gray box, we may have an emotional gray box. We may have a relationship gray box. There's a gray box that we can all work on. This just happens to be a financial conversation. Yep. Yeah, totally. I, um, can you talk about like, just, uh, did, when you set up your first, uh, Facebook group, um, did they opt in or did you just add them? Like, just walk us through kind of, cause it was your database. It was your people, people you knew or kind of knew, um, what was your thought process back then? And what's your top, has it changed anything like that? Um, you yeah. know, cause sometimes we wait on our teams to do things and it sounds like you took control of your own database and you created like something real because you were going to take this step for yourself and you wanted to bring people with you. Yeah. So at this time in my career, I did not have a team. 
So I didn't share this part more so because I forgot. I'm totally comfortable sharing everything. So (laughs) before I had the gray box moment, I did have an assistant. And um, this is a whole nother topic that Adelina is a master at. But I hired that assistant for luxury and not leverage. So -hmm. when I hired them, I like took my foot off the gas. My business started to slow down. Like things were not good to the point that she saw the writing on the wall that I probably was not going to be able to pay her soon. And we had a very, like she, she quit and it was so painful. It was so humiliating. And I actually sat down with a mentor of mine um, and just said, I think I'm leaving real estate. Like, I can't do this. I hate this, you know, whatever he goes, how broke are you right now? And I I go, I go really broke, like really broke. And he didn't pause. He took out his checkbook and he stroked me a $5,000 check. He goes, I know you'll pay me back. Go deal with your taxes and get back on track. Like this is not the end for you. So he did that for me in March. I paid him back in May. Wow. It was like I hit the ground running after that conversation. Um, And I mean, I still share that story with people all the time because He'll even say, he's like, Bethany, there's a lot of people I've given $5,000 to and they've never paid me back. But like for me, sometimes the pressure of like, I didn't want to let him down. So I was like, I didn't want to do it for myself in that moment, to be really honest. I didn't feel worthy. I felt personally like garbage. My mindset was crap, but he believed in me enough that I was like, if he believes in me, maybe I can believe in myself. And that kind of shifted everything for me. So Um, with that, I started to just be really transparent on Facebook where I would, I didn't share about like Megan quitting or whatever, um, which sidebar there's like a redemptive part to that. Cause this last year she sent me like business, like she referred me business again and it's been that long. And so that was like really special to me. But anyway, um, I just started sharing like my tax story. Like I literally just started posting about, and maybe I didn't say, I'd have to go back and look. I don't know if I actually said taxes at the beginning, but I think I just was like, what financial books are you digging into? Like, I was very clear that this was an area of my life I was going to figure out. And um, I started sharing about my first duplex purchase and the challenges of that. Um, And I think just by, I kind of started to have this, presence with my database around, I wasn't afraid to go somewhere when it came to like conversation. Like I was like, if I'm going to ask someone a question, they have every right to ask me the question. Or if they, if they're struggling in an area of their life and I might be able to help them as messy as like mine was, um, I just wanted to put things out there. So as I moved through gaining more confidence around just sharing, like my story and not, not the fear of, is that going to impact my business in a bad way? Cause I think sometimes people don't share because they're like, well, what if people think I'm a failure and then they don't want to work with me in real estate? Like there's a million ways our brain goes where instead I was just like, actually, I really think people want to work with authentic people and people they feel like they can relate to and trust. And so the Facebook group, Adelina answer your question was literally from me sharing posts on Facebook and Instagram that then people would share with their friends. And my Facebook group was half realtors and half my database. Wow. So there were a lot of realtors struggling financially that weren't willing to raise their hand, but they were curious enough to go like, I'll join this group and be a fly on the wall. And um, I have really great relationships with a lot of those people today. You know, what struck me about, um, your, your mentor, your friend who said, um, how broke are you? Right. When I heard that my mind went to the, the fact that often when we want to make really big decisions in our life, like you were going to get out of real estate. Yeah. It so much of life has to do with how broke are you? Like your financial situation, um, often, often drives your decisions. 
So knowing how our financial situation drives our decisions, like just on a psychological level, right? Like you were like, I'm, I'm not even doing real estate anymore. Like I suck, right? And so much of that was driven by your financial situation at the time, right? Like knowing that how important it is for us to like this to be the year that we get our gray box out and we, we do the work on that to be able to not be in that situation. Um, and, and then the second thing I thought of as you were talking about your Facebook group was like, who is the next Bethany in you guys' world, right? And I asked that question because if I think about it with my database, I don't know who the next Bethany is because people don't talk about their financial situation. And so it's kind of like my, I don't wanna say my problem, it's my opportunity to open that up for them because I don't know who the next Bethany is. I don't know somebody's tax debt. I don't know somebody's, um, I don't know what, I don't know how much they owe uh, in credit card debt. I don't know their situation and I can't pretend to know it, but by not including people in it, um, I'm not helping the next Bethany. I'm not helping the next Adelina. I'm not helping the next Jordan, the next Elizabeth, the next Helen, right? Um, so, okay, here's what I know. Here's what I've seen. And you can tell me what you've seen and what you think might work. I have seen a lot of our people, like we're aware that the wealth series is here. Um, we're almost a little immune to it because we're in Ben's orbit so much yeah. that, and we hear so much of this already that it's, we are, we're very, I'm desensitized to it. Maybe not everybody in the same box, but certainly I feel more desensitized than seven years ago when I first heard these concepts, right? Um, so what I, but, but I think we're very good people. So we post it to our social media, maybe once or twice, and then we're good. Mm -hmm. We share the message. Um, a little passive, right? Like myself included in the passive box. Um, how, like, what are you seeing success with? What do you think we should be doing? <laughs> how should we go about this? Because, you know, I know like the first episode dropped, but like, we got plenty of time. Got plenty yeah. of time. People, we can get people signed up this week, uh, early next week, like no problem. Um, mm -hmm. to be part of this experience. What do you suggest? Like, what are you like as an individual agent on a team? What What would you say? If you're struggling to connect with your database and feel genuine, there is no better way for your people to know you care than for you to pick up the phone and say. Hey, Adelina, it's Bethany. I know it's been a while. How are things going? It's the first of the year. A lot of people are setting New Year's resolutions right now, and most of them are going to cost money. <laughs> if, you're, if you're interested, I actually am helping host a well series over the next eight weeks. And by the way, when you complete it in that time frame, you have a chance to win $10,000. I don't know about you, but like none of my database has been like, don't call me, right? Like everyone's been like, oh, she cares about my goals. I'm not asking them for a referral. Like it is literally a like, I care about you. What are your goals this year? And chances are your goals are going to cost money, right? If they want to go to Hawaii this year with their kids, they want to bring their kids to Disney World. Any of those things are going to cost them money. I would be very careful to not overthink it and just reach out. The I shared earlier, I was the least qualified person to do any of this. Like, even if you only have 20 people, I promise you those 20 people could be your raving fans this coming year and send you over 80% of your business. When I look at, like, especially if you're, you know, an in, like an agent just growing your business, you really need to find your raving fans. Like most of I think it's 70% of our transactions, maybe more than that, actually, were from just my personal database this last year, because I've just focused on growing it. And the other thing is, it's less awkward, or at least I think it is less awkward to add someone on Facebook that maybe you met in passing at a friend's like party, right? Like you go to an event, you meet someone and you're like, shoot, what was their name? You didn't get their phone number. So you go add them on Facebook, or at least that's what I've done over the last couple of years. And then it's easier to Facebook message them the exact same question. Hey, it was really great to meet you at Adelina's party the other night. Um, you know, you were talking about this. I wanted to share this opportunity with you. Then what happens is you start growing your database 
by adding these people. Cause then, well, what do you need? You need their email address to be able to send them the information, right? So it's just an easy way to, I don't know, build your database and reach out to people. But if you're wanting to leverage the wealth series, I believe you have a solid week and a half left where you could get this done launched and you could have at least a group of 20 to 50 people from your database and it will hold you accountable. A lot of people raise their hands earlier like this this is going to be their year, right? They're claiming this year. Th- this is the best way for you to do it because my guess is most of the things you want to do this year also cost money. <laughs> Right on, right on. I love that. How old are you, Bethany? I am, sometimes I forget, I'm 34. You're 34. Wow, okay, amazing. I just love, um, I love that we don't have to have an entire lifetime to figure out, plug into tools, let those tools do the work for you, right? We almost, uh, at our team meeting on Monday, we talked about big swings, uh, right? Like at least I was somehow programmed when I was growing up that, um, I got to wait for that big, like the big swing moment, that one big thing is going to change my life. Right. And it's never that it's the, it's like when you're like in a, in a, a romantic relationship, it's not one vacation. It's not one date that changes that relationship. It's the daily things, you know, it's, I was talking to high man. It's like it's taking out the trash. It's un- emptying the dishwasher, right. It's spending time with your spouse or your significant other spending time with the kids. That's what builds right? That amazing relationship. So it's not these big swings, right? What builds our business is plugging into these things that are offered to us. And and you've just done a phenomenal job with that. And I wanted to make sure that uh, people heard, maybe they've heard from Ben, which is awesome. I love hearing it from the top, but then somebody who's actually done it, that's just like us, not superhuman, right? And Ben is not superhuman. He's got his own story, right? Um, but superhuman, like more like recently uh, or less superhuman, right? Yeah. Um, well, and I think too, like Adelina, my, I mean, really we talk about the, um, oh my gosh, the hockey stick approach, the leg. Mm-hmm. Um, and really my stuff took off arguably in 2020. That That was two years ago. Now I would say I was putting in a lot of the work prior to that. Right. And so I just want to encourage you that if you're on the call too, and you're feeling like, man, I've been at this real estate thing for a year and I don't feel like it's popped off yet. Or I, you know, I'm really trying to hammer my own debt or whatever that looks like. It's not overnight. We often feel like we're, um, we often are winning so slowly that we think we're losing, which yeah. is, and I've heard it the other way too, right? We often are losing so slowly that we think we're winning and the easiest way to know is by tracking it, which all happens in your net worth tracker. And I'll just say this, we've created a culture on our team and I'm not saying everyone needs to go do this because I'll probably make a lot of people uncomfortable, but we've created a culture on our team where on their 411, which is posted up in the office, is their net worth goal and where they're at. So it doesn't have to be like, hey, how much debt I have. Now I know because usually I'll sit down and talk to them about what do you need to do next to get to that net worth marker. But I think like getting rid of the stigma around money being a part of your identity, I think that's why so many people are so uncomfortable is because money becomes a part of their identity, which I'll tell you right now, many of you probably know this, it can't be. Just like your career can't be. Like I wrapped my identity up way too long and did my clients like me? Was I good at what I was doing? And the minute I let that go and just was like, I'm just going to be authentically myself and find where I really believe my identity comes from, which I believe is Jesus. And then from there, just invite people along the way. I know, Adelina, you asked me about now, whenever I do any investment project, I invite people along the way. So I have a, a house, a hoarder house I've been flipping. It's almost done. And I'm inviting people to an open house. Every other month, I do an investment seminar, and it's always in one of my projects or something that I'm working on, because what better way to invite people to do something than by showing them that you're actually doing it? And guess what? It doesn't cost me that much because one, the venue is free. Two, (laughs) I just provide like wine and beer, and I'm like, hey, grab a beer. Here's a little pamphlet. 
let's talk about investing. So I just want to encourage you, like, don't, don't wrap things up into meaning more than they are and just invite people to be a part of it. I love that. You know, especially because we're in the new year's resolution phase and I want to wrap with this. So for everyone that's got to go here in a few minutes, um, we're in the new year's resolution phase. And I know Ben and Chris on a previous, um, Friday all partner call. And if you're not on those every Friday, man, you are missing out. Um, but they talk about New Year's resolutions uh, and about nine to 12% of people actually meet their New Year's resolution. So I guess my question is, we're in an environment where goals, like we talk about goals, right? We set goals, like we, we believe in goals, right? And then something happens, like there's a gap between setting the goal and actually doing the work. We all have a goal. We all want to achieve the goal, right? We all think it's important. And then, and then there's a gap, right? And then, because obviously 9% is not 100%. It's not even 80%, it's not even 50% or 20%, it's 9%. Uh, when you were going through some of this yourself, you know, between setting a goal, like I want to change my life this year. I want to, I, I want to get rid of this like burden perhaps. Um, like, I know you took steps to actually do it, right? You weren't entitled in the fact that I just have this goal. I want to get rid of my debt. Like somebody's going to save me. Like you did the work. Is there any feedback or any advice that you can provide to our people as they're going through the work, whether it is financial or it's something else, how would you go about it so that you could be part of the 9% versus the, you know, 89% or the 91% who don't meet their goals? Totally. This is going to sound kind of goofy, but I would say do something every day. Okay. So one of the things that I did while I was pursuing my financial goal is I literally found a way every day to earn a dollar. Like if I wasn't working in real estate that day, then I needed to find things to literally sell in my home. And I I would literally find ways to do something every day where I was getting closer to my goal or I would, you know, double check my net worth tracker or I mean at that time there were ways you could make like gift card money by doing surveys online. Like I literally and the reason I think do something every day is because it makes it like a priority. Like if something, if you say something's a priority, but you're not actually doing a small step towards it every day, is it really? Because it didn't have to be a big thing. It was like 15 minutes maybe sometimes or even less. So um, I would say find ways to actually keep it present and do something towards that every single day. That applies to relationships. That apply. I mean, that applies to everything. So even now, like as we're, you know, in a shifting market right now, that's the same thing. I am very intentional every day. I am messaging people on Facebook and Instagram because it's the easiest way for me to build my database and connect with new people on where they're at. And I've set multiple recruiting appointments recently just from messaging people on Instagram. So it's like, I think just take those small steps every day. Man, I love that. Um, I love that so much. Tim, um, who was it? I think it was Tim Ferriss. Um, who wrote the book, uh, Tools of Titans. And there was, a, there was a part we talked about yesterday at one of our meetings. And he said, the secret is to show up, do the work and go home, right? And I love what you just said, do something every day. Whatever your gray box is, the secret for you was to do something every day about it. Um, and that paves the path towards that success. Thank you so much. Uh, will you pop your information into chat so that we can save you in our cell phone? Um, yes. So that we know anytime we have any Minnesota referrals, I bet if you don't cover it, you know someone who does cover uh, that area. Um, and certainly if any of this either touched your heart or touched your brain or in any way uh, inspired you or challenged you, um, stay in touch with Bethany. She's, she's one of the real people. Uh, she's, if you haven't figured it out, she's authentic. Um, and so, so we appreciate that. And then next week, you guys, um, we get to hear from 
one of our favorites, Valencia. The market has shifted, you guys, and we are we're ready to take action in 2023. And Valencia is so good at so many of her dialogues, her scripts, whatever you want to call them. She is a communication master. Just want to hear like what she's doing in this market. Well, if you've got anything, um, questions or maybe topics that you want her to make sure she gets uh, on, then just let any of us know and we'll make sure Valencia knows. And then, and then we'll just continue the trend for the rest of this year. Is there anything we can do for you, Bethany? No, but I would say if you are interested in doing the well series in a way where you're doing this with your database, I host a call every week on Friday for place. It's on the training calendar and it's uh, Fridays at noon central around the same time zone, which is great. Um, so join tomorrow. Even if you're like, I'm thinking about getting started, but not sure if I still really want to commit to it. Join tomorrow. There, uh, my good friends in Wisconsin have over 300 people and that's just from one team. And I think they've added like 130 new database people just from wow. Facebook. So like crazy numbers. So would love to have you on the call tomorrow. Awesome. Awesome. Love that. You guys have a good rest of your day. It's 917. We're two minutes past. You guys have an amazing rest of your day. We'll see you next week. Thanks guys. Have a good one. Thanks, Bethany.